um, if you would like to give to the vine. And by the way, don't we appreciate $6,000 of generosity from Amigo Bill helping other families? Isn't that great? That's awesome. So good job. On Christmas Eve, now for years we'd never take a collection on Christmas Eve because I would not have it. Like we're not doing it. Uh, because, you know, people come in first time in church. Yeah, I haven't been in church. I come to church once a year and they're asking for my money. I'm like, no, we're not going to do that. However, I relented a year or two ago because if we give to the vine, I'm fine for that. Because actually people from the community were asking me about it. Hey, we'd like to give. We'd like to give to the vine and different things. I said, okay, Christmas Eve, we'll do that. Actually, last year, I think probably fueled a third of the whole budget for the vine was just on Christmas Eve offering. So it is pretty important. If you'd like to give on Christmas Eve, just put in the memo. Just put, you know, you write it out, think of old Bible church, just put the vine. If you do not do that, just realize there will be handwriting different than your own, which will say the vine, okay? So we will take all the check that we get that night, and it's going directly to the vine uh, either way. So you're allowed to do that. There's boxes in the back, and uh, we would appreciate it because that is a super important ministry. And again, I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of this church. I'm proud of your generosity. I'll give you a hand myself. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I'm going to open up in prayer, and uh, then we'll get started as we take a look into God's Word. Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for this church family, uh, for those who are here in person today, and also for those who are listening on the live stream. So we appreciate them both. I just ask God that you would give us your wisdom and direct us as we turn our attention over to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 2, go ahead and turn over there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a story. Listen, before... I don't want to hear anything about if the story, it's not true, Bill, you were just told that, fine, I'm just telling you what I heard. What happens after that, you know, you, you guys can do with it as you please. Jaslyn, our secretary's daughter, daughter, told me that you had a party on Friday, right? Yes, Christmas party on Friday. Yes, she did. She's sitting right there. And uh, she said, we have to have our food in by Monday. I said, why is that? Why do you have to bring in food by Monday? She said, it has to be quarantined. <laughs> so I was asking, I said, you know, I asked her on Friday, I said, is that really true? Are you just like telling me that? She goes, no, we had to bring it on Monday, so it was quarantined. Now, I, figured, I think if you're quarantining food, food, it should have been the full 14 days, right? I mean, let's not mess around, you know, just take it out the whole, the whole, the whole distance, really. And, you know, if, if they want to quarantine the food, I'm not going to argue with it or say anything else, because would it surprise me? Nothing surprises me in 2020 anymore. I don't think, what, what did they say on Christmas vacation? I couldn't be more surprised if I woke up tomorrow morning with my head stapled to the carpet, right? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's like, after a while, I can't even say that. I don't think there can be anything more surprising to me at this point in, in, my, in my life. So, we get it. You know, people are super cautious when it comes to coronavirus and this and that and regulations and so on and so forth. Glad, actually, that I live in Ohio because Ohio is a lot better than some of the other states. So I, I just appreciate this state, you know what I mean, and that we get to live here and, and for the freedoms that we have in this state. But hear me now. What if we treated God as seriously as we do coronavirus? What if we were as particular about keeping his word as we were all the rules and regulations when it comes to COVID-19? Man, this world would be a different place. I think our walk with God would be a different place if we took him that seriously. And we should. Because you know what? God's got a great plan for this world. He's got a great desires for this world. The one thing that we're going to talk about is what the angel said. And you have an angel, and he appears to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2. And he says that a Savior had been born. And he wanted them to know. In the city of David, a, a Savior has been born to you. This is great news, a wonderful joy for all people. He is Christ the Lord. Now, the angel makes that announcement. Joining him are, is an army of angels... And they say this in Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. Now this verse, verse 14, breaks down simply. Glory goes to God. Peace is on earth. Goodwill to men. That is the heart of God. This comes directly from a chorus of angels in unison saying the same thing. There's 100% agreement on this. Direct revelation from God. This is my desire for the world. I want glory going to heaven. That's God. I want peace on earth. I want goodwill to men. Now, has this changed? Or is this still the continuous desire 
and the reverberating prayer of the angels on that day. Now, he said it, right? This whole choir of angels, they said this. I did not say this. I did not make this up. I'm only coming today to talk about what's already here and what is already stated as the direct desire and will of God is that he will get praise, that we will have peace, and there will be goodwill to men. This is what we must live. This has to be every day of our lives. Make Christmas a lifestyle. <clears throat> it shouldn't be about now. I mean, I want to have peace and joy. I don't want to say, when is Christmas over? Because I'm going to tell you what, as soon as I get to December 26th, this is all out the window. No more peace on earth. No more goodwill to men. That's it. Don't bother me again until next December. No, I look at this and say, no, this is our lifestyle. This is all year. This is God's plan, not just for a day, not just for a month. This is God's plan all the time. Is your praise going to God? Do you have peace in your heart? Do you have goodwill towards your fellow man? Does this, does this describe us? Because wherever it doesn't, we've got to fix this. And we've got to come together and say, hey, I've got to get my heart wrapped around what God's heart is. So let's start with glory to the God in the highest. Obviously, when it says the highest, it's clearly a reference to heaven, clearly a reference to where God dwells. This is going to God. It says glory to God. Now, this is, I don't want to confuse this term at all. I want to make it very simple. We're talking about praising God. That's what we're talking about. The angels were singing. They were praising God in unison, a whole choir of angels. They're all singing. And by the way, these are in the language, the original language. The word is soldiers. This is the army of heaven. And an army is desiring and singing this, glory to God in the highest peace on earth, goodwill to men. They want glory going to God. They're singing praises and thus bringing glory to God. And any time I thank God and give Him credit, that's what praise is. That's what glory is. It's just giving credit back to God and acknowledging His role in our lives because every good and perfect gift comes from Him anyway. Now listen, this is the way that we normally live. If I have a photo on Instagram on either of my sites, that gets shared on another larger photo hub, they always give credit back. Credit goes back to the, to the guy who took the photo in the first place. That's normal. If somebody does something to you, what do you or for you, what do you normally say? Thank you. Right? You're going to be saying hopefully a lot of that. You know, you won't just get cold this Christmas, but you actually get some gifts, right? And you'll be saying, hey, thanks for doing that. Thanks for thinking about me. I appreciate it. That's giving praise to that person. Does God deserve praise? our praise. Does he? I would say sure. I mean, he just said, the, the angels just said a Savior's been born. Jesus Christ died to erase all of our sins, man. That alone is worthy of praise. Even when Paul was talking to heathens who didn't even know God, he said, do you understand? God gives you rain and crops in season, food, and he gives you joy in your heart. God is putting joy in your heart. You don't even know him, don't even acknowledge him. He's still working through common grace in your life, and there are a lot of people out there who have a lot because God's given them a lot, and sometimes they don't even know it. And when you find that out and you figure out that all my good gifts, every perfect gift comes from the Father of heavenly lights, then you say, thanks. That's glory to God. It's praise. When you realize how much we need a Savior. Now, why did God give Jesus Christ? It says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. I mean, he so loved you. He so loved you that he gave his one and only son. Now, you're going to give gifts this year, I assume, because you love people. Do you not love those that you give gifts to? You buy gifts for your children, you love them. Gifts for your spouse, gifts for friends, because to me, this is a statement, I love you. I care about you. That's why I want to give you something. Now, sometimes we give gifts that are just cool. It's just cool. Yeah, no, nah, maybe they didn't need it. You just gave it to them because you thought that they would like it. I've given gifts that are uncool because somebody needed it. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like a cool gift. Might have been even kind of a weird gift. But you needed it, and that's the reason I got it. Did God send Jesus Christ into this world because he just wanted to do something cool? Or did he send Jesus Christ into the world because we needed a Savior? Which is it? 
Ah, it was just something to do. He's bored. You know what I'm saying? He was bored. He just decided to have him someday. He sent his son to earth because couldn't think of anything better to do. I'll just send him down there. Why not? Let him get killed on a cross. It's all, it's all good. Or did Jesus Christ come to die on that cross to do something extraordinary? To do something significant? You shall name him Jesus because he will what? He will save his people from what? Their sins. Now, we will say, it says in the Bible, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There are a lot of people out there, and they'll say this. You'll say, sinner. They'll say, well, somebody is, but I'm not that bad. Okay? I can agree to this fact from the human perspective and the American mindset. There are good sinners, and there are bad sinners. You know what I'm saying? There are very nice people who sin, and there are very bad people who sin. But this is like this. In order for you to get to heaven, let's compare it to something physical, you've got to swim the Atlantic Ocean. Bad swimmers are going to drown out there. Good swimmers are going to drown out there. There's no one going to make it all the way there by themselves. It doesn't matter if you think you're good. It doesn't matter if you think you're a nice person. It doesn't matter if you're better than your neighbor. It doesn't matter that you didn't rob a bank and kill somebody and all that stuff that I've heard multiple times in my life. Because very few people actually have killed people and robbed banks, to be honest with you. It's not a very high bar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a cross. Hey, as long as I didn't kill anybody or rob any banks, I guess I'm going to go to heaven. We needed a Savior. If we didn't need it, he wouldn't have sent him. He says, every single person has sinned. The wages of sin is death. But God has given eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we're saying, why should I praise God Christmas time? In all times, because in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He deserves credit. He deserves our praise. Now, in this nation of ours, we will build monuments and statues to heroes. Some heroes so long ago, we wouldn't even know who they are when we see the statue. Some are more modern. When you go to the Philadelphia, well, if you would go to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, next to the grand stairs that go up to that museum is a statue of Rocky. Do you guys know who Rocky is? People will stand in line in Philadelphia to go pose by a life-size statue of Rocky Balboa. Right? Right? You guys remember the scene, running the zone, you remember the scene, running up the stairs, that's why he's there. Now, not to bust your bubble or anything like that, Rocky's not even real. You know what I'm saying? He's not even real. He's a fictional hero, and, and people stand in line. And, and by the way, I'm not ripping on it, I've stood in line too. And I've waited, come on, people, come on, people, I want my turn to go stand by Rocky so I could go like this, you know what I mean? Like I just ran up the stairs of the art museum myself, because I thought it was cool too. He's not even real, and yet he gets credit. God doesn't want a statue, but he does want praise. And he deserves our praise, every bit of it. We need to glorify and honor him. So my life will not make sense if I don't get this right. This is the world and how it's supposed to be working. Glory goes to God. Are you? So ask yourself this. Am I praising God? Have I praised God this week? One young couple here got married yesterday, right? Are you thank hey, look, look at that ring. Yeah, look at that. It's awesome. <laughs> you're thanking God, right? You know, praising the Lord, praising the Lord for a good business and what you guys do and when you have good years, praising God, praising God for families, praising God for health, praising God for the things that you've gotten through. Thank you, God, praise you, honor and glory in the highest because that's where it goes. And by the way, not to sidestep too far here, glory to God, not us. All right, if we're sitting here to glorify ourselves, man, did we miss the boat. If we're sitting here, if I build do anything for my own glory, I missed the boat. Not about my glory. Not about praise should be, praise should be, if anything, bouncing off me, going right back to God, because I'll just point it right back to him and say, hey, I can't do anything without him. All right, we got that part down, right? All right, now let's go to a super significant part to us as well, and that is peace on earth. It was announced that the Savior was born, tied in with the Savior being born is peace on earth. You can't divide those two. The Prince of Peace was in a manger. He was right there. One of the reasons we can't have peace is because Jesus Christ came to this world. He died for our sins. He intercedes for us. It is the continual prayer and desire of God that we have peace. Peace meaning this. Now, if you look up the definition of peace, it's this. It's rest. It's completeness. Wholeness. That's part of what it is. It's a calm. Right? I'm not fighting. I have a sense of calm that all is well. In my soul, it refers to completeness. And I like that 
because sometimes that's easy to forget. In a year like this, especially, you know, through the frustrations that we've been through, some people through the losses that they've been through, through, uh, at times, extraordinary change, to realize this one important thing, you have what you need. And sometimes we don't have a sense of peace because we always think there's a missing part. There's something else we need for our happiness. There's something else we need for our contentment. Instead of realizing, I got what I need right here. You know, whether it's your friends, your family, whatever it is, your life is complete. And so you can't look at everything else and say, well, you know, if I just had this and I had this. There, there's always a battle and a fight somewhere, guys. You can have peace anyway. Peace on earth, on this earth, right here on a sinful world, a brutal world, a hateful world, that's the world that Jesus came into, into a world that would crucify a miracle worker out of jealousy. Peace on that world. And if there could be peace on that world, there could be peace in my world. If there could be peace in Israel in those days, there can be peace in America in this day. And that's what I believe with all my heart. This is what God wants. And sometimes we just have to go and pick it up and understand my life is complete. It really is. Now, here's one area of peace that's super important, and that is peace with God. We have horizontal relationships, and, and we've got vertical relationships. Our vertical relationship with God is, is critical. It's important. Don't overlook it. Don't go skating around trying to accomplish a ton of stuff in life and forget about this one. We can have peace with God. One of the great things Jesus Christ did in Romans 5, 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith... We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been justified by faith. And that means this. It is, in God's eyes, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, ask Him to forgive you of your sins. When He sees you, He sees you as a righteous person. He doesn't see you with a whole slate of wrongs, every bad thing you've ever done. He doesn't see you that way. He sees you like you're Christ. It's just as if I had not sinned. So we have to look at our lives and remember that, yeah, you know, I can forget about these things in the past. I don't have to worry about these things because God's not looking down on me. God's not looking down and He's not upset with me because He's forgiven and He's forgotten. And your sin as far as the east is from the west. Buried, covered, like graffiti that's painted over with white paint so you can't see it anymore. God doesn't see all those wrongs. And I can have peace with God because, why? Because I've been declared righteous. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, since that happened, since that that transaction has been made when I put my faith in Jesus, now what I have is peace with God. Now, if I can have that peace flowing into me, then that peace can flow all around me, right? And into every situation in which I'm going to come. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It's a big deal to know that we're square with the big house. The slate is clean. Now, sometimes people look at it and they wonder, and they feel ashamed because of things in their past. They wonder if they can be forgiven for what they've done, the bad choices that they've made. Can I overcome it? Can I ever get past it? I can't tell you how many times I've heard from people say things like this. If I walked into the church, the roof would fall in. You've ever heard anyone say that? The whole church would collapse. Yet in world history, there is no church roof that has ever collapsed because a sinner walked through that door. In fact, what we find in the Bible is this, that every time a person changes their lives, and comes back to God, it says there's rejoicing in heaven. God not upset that someone with a past walked in the door. He's thrilled. He's excited about it. He wants to see that. You can have peace. Those chains, those burdens you can bring to the cross and drop them off. God already knows what you've done. Jesus Christ died for sinners. Jesus Christ was the friend of sinners. Man, never let this rob you of your peace, what your past is. Give it to God, do the best that you can, and move forward. In this way, we will have peace. In fact, just so you know how God feels about you, in Romans chapter 8, if you guys have your Bibles and want to turn over there or look it up in your phones, 
That's a fantastic passage of Scripture. It'll be up there on the wall too for you. It says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You guys see that? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also along with Him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God interceding for you. Who shall separate us from the love of God in Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? No. And then in verse 37, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. How awesome is that? Think about that. No condemnation. If God is with you, who can be against you? He's given you all things. There's nothing can separate you from the love of God. Peace. Peace. Let it rule in your hearts and lives. Peace. Let it overcome you right now. Whatever your burdens are, whatever you're going through right now, please absorb what I'm talking about and understand it. I know we have problems. We're going to get into it right now. How do we deal with these things? We have peace in our lives. Peace is calm. Peace does not mean everything went our way. Peace does not mean there's going to be trouble or won't be trouble. It's about knowing that we're going to be okay no matter what. Remember, it's a sense of calm. It's a sense of well-being. No matter what is happening around me, that I can have this feeling of rest. This entire world can be frantic while I be at peace, and I'm not freaking out about it. There can be waves crashing all around me, and my cage not be rattled. And my heart be calm as calm can be. Why? Because peace is not about what's going on outside of me. Peace is all about what's going on inside of me. Peace is not about my circumstances. It's not about winning everything I want to win at. Are you calm? Would your family describe you as calm? Would they describe you as a, peace and a, per, a person of peace? Do they see it? In your voice, do they hear it? Do they see it in your eyes? Do they see it in your behavior, this peace of God, this calm, no matter what's happening to you, that you know you're going to be okay? Because you know God's going to get you through. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Now, I want to say, not that I'm preaching on this today, but right ahead of this, he's already talked about sending the Holy Spirit, the comforter and counselor. So that's one of the reasons why he's saying that, because we all as Christians have the Holy Spirit. He says, peace I leave with you, and, and certainly that's part in the Holy Spirit. My peace I give you, I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Why in the world would Jesus say, don't be afraid, unless there was something to be afraid of? Why would he even say it? He's not saying you're never going to see anything that's scary. He's going to say, I left you with my peace, so you can deal with it. In John, just two chapters later, John 16, this is all part of the same conversation, 14, 15, 16, 17. In John 16, 13, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now, listen, God just announced peace on earth. Peace on earth. Jesus Christ says, I'm going to give you my peace. In this world you will have trouble. You will. We all will. But my peace I give to you, even in a world of trouble, is not about not having problems. And if we get this confused, well, I can only have peace when the world's, <laughs> when everything's going my way, then how weak are we seriously in our faith? If we can only have peace when it's going well, we can't have peace in a storm. I don't want to confuse peace with an absence of trouble. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Man, I'm not despairing. I'm not destroyed. Yeah, we've gone through hard times, but it's not breaking me down. Because I have peace, right? The peace that God has talked talk to us about. So pray, don't let yourself get rattled, embrace it. We're told in Philippians 4, 6, listen, don't be anxious about anything, right? Don't let it wreck your world. But in 
but by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then verse 7 of Philippians 4, which should be up here. It says there, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Like a sentinel, like a guard, it's going to be there with you and for you. One of my favorite Christmas songs is, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Anyone else like that song? I heard the bells on Christmas Day. They're old, familiar carols. Play. By the way, Casting, Casting Crowns has a great rendition of this. You guys can go YouTube it later on and listen to it. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Their old, familiar carols play. And mild and sweet, their songs repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And the bells are ringing like a choir they're singing. In my heart, I hear them. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. In despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Now here is a man on Christmas Day walking down the street, hearing the bells of the, all the churches playing out Christmas songs. The Christmas songs are talking about the Christmas story. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men, and he hears it. And he's thinking about it. And he said, but there's no peace on earth. There's no peace here. There, there's hatred here. And by the way, this was written in the 1860s. He goes on, he said, Then rang the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to men. Then ringing, singing on its way. The world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime. A peace on earth, goodwill to men. It became clear to me, the bells were still ringing, that God is not dead, He does not sleep, there is peace on earth, my world revolved from night to day, because there could be peace in His heart. And that was written, by the way, by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, have you ever heard of him, right? Famous American poet wrote that two years after his wife had died in a freak accident. She caught on fire and died at home. His son was severely wounded in the Civil War. He didn't want his son to go into the Civil War. His son went and didn't listen to that and went in anyway. And he got severely wounded there. And here's a man, he's been through trauma. He's been through heartache. His wife was dead. His son was very severely injured. Would never, he would never fight again. He would never be able to return to battle because of the injuries that he received. And here's a man dealing with it. Where is the peace? Where is the peace? Where is the peace? And we find it's, it's not about what's going on in the world. It's about what's going on in my heart and understanding that God is in control and He's still here. So we realize that peace is not about perfection in life. It is about the power of God. I don't need perfection to have peace, I need the power of God working inside me. That's my peace. The Holy Spirit working with it. That's my peace. Now listen, all this stuff I'm talking about today, this is our battle. This is real in the trenches for every single one of us. We've got to recall the truth and build our lives on that foundation. There is peace with God. There is peace in life. And there's also peace with other people because every time you look at this definition, Old Testament or New, it talks about there, you know, times where there's no discord. Now look, sometimes people get at war with each other. There's not a thing you can do about it. Somebody might hate your guts. There's nothing you can do about it. They say this, they say this, that, and the other. Okay, well, yeah, that, that stuff happens. I'm there too. It happens to me. It happens to you. But as far as me and what I do, I need to make sure that I'm doing things that are going to bring peace. Because you want to give some kid some real ugly Christmas memories, you go into Christmas not being at peace where everyone's fighting and arguing. Now, I've seen, I've seen devastation on Christmas Day. I've been in a hospital room with my own father who was a pastor too. And he and I were going as, I, he was going as the pastor of the church where he had a, a man in the church who was in a terrible car accident the night before. This is Christmas morning. He wakes me up. I forget what time it was, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, whatever. Bill, 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 you want to come to the hospital with me? Some of that happened. I'm like, yeah, I'll get up and I'll go with you. And here's a man who's 
writhing in pain in the ER room. He's just lost his wife because they were out drinking and he had an accident on the ice and she got killed in that accident. This is Christmas morning. And I think, well, that could have been avoided. You know what I'm saying? That didn't need to happen. I've seen fights as a kid, two bros going at each other, kind of like hold my eggnog moment, we're going to take it out to the street, arguing, bickering, coming fist to cuffs. I'm a little kid watching this stuff, you know, seeing this. It's like, that's on us, you know what I'm saying? When I, not me as a kid, but on them. And if I'm going to cause that kind of mayhem in somebody else's world, and I'm out there misbehaving, doing a bunch of stuff I shouldn't be doing, that's on me. I'm wrecking my own peace. I'm hurting my own life. Peace. Man, listen, when someone pulls out in front of you and you don't like it, calm yourself down, okay? Somebody went into the line, checkout line, there's 10 items or less with 50 items. Calm yourself down. They can't figure out stuff, self-checkout. It might be me. You know what I'm saying? Just calm yourself down. Your stuff is stuck in Cleveland that you ordered for Christmas and it's sitting there stuck in the distribution center and every day you check the tracking, you know what I'm saying, right? Who doesn't want to raid that place and get your stuff back, right? I mean, we're, we're there, with, we're all in the same boat. Just relax, relax. It'll get here when it gets here. We'll have it by next Christmas, don't worry. <laughs> Hopefully they're the same size. You know, I'll say, where's this year? You'll get there. Don't worry about these things. I say it all the time, and my wife, by the way, reminded me of this. Bill, you got, just be careful of your expectations, because I think, unlike a lot of us, we expect a lot of people to think like we do, and they don't, because we're the only one sometimes that's thinking like we do anyway. Calm yourself down, right? Change your expectations. Let things go. I say this all the time. I take life as it comes. I take life as it comes. I take life as it comes. However it rolls, however it comes, just take it and deal with it. It says in uh, Hebrews 12, 14, make every effort to live in peace with everyone. In Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Do what you can, because there's peace with God, there's peace in life, and there's peace with other people. This is an important concept. I want you guys to listen. I've been out there shopping. I've been out there. It's busy. You know, you got ministry. Like, we're busy, man. We're coming. This is shooting the rapids for us right now. You know, there's going to be extra hours today. There's going to be extra hours tomorrow. It's how it is. It's how it is every Christmas. Okay, just take it as it comes. But you know what? I want to be at peace. I want to be, I want to have the Christmas, like the love and the joy and the peace, right? You want to have these kind of stuff. So we've got glory going to God and peace on earth and goodwill to men. And that means that God's favor is shining on us. God's goodwill is on us like syrup on a pancake, like butter on toast, like icing on the cake. He's not going to let us down. His goodwill, His favor is already to you. In Psalm 23, 6, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Did you guys hear that? Psalm 23, 6. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've, I've used this verse so many times when I've done funerals. Man, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I hope you can look back and say that is true. I've seen God's goodness in my life. I've seen God's love in my life. And as we look over 20 in, through 2020, I realize, you know, it's been a hard year. Uh, some have suffered losses, uh, certainly changes. It's been a different year for sure, right? I mean, the way we operate, the way we do things, the way society's operating right now, it's different. But you know what? There's a lot of great things about this year. And I've experienced a lot of good in this year, and I'm not going to lose sight of it. God, your, your favor has still been on me. I've had everything that I have needed. We know that Jesus Christ taught us that God gives good gifts to his own children, his favor on you means you're important. Now, I have a question. If God's favor is on you, here's my question. Is your favor on others? What is your will like towards other people? Are there people you're bitter against, people you want to see trip up? Is there any maliciousness in you? Hey, Amen. You're just harboring that. You're just harboring those hard feelings. Sometimes it comes a time for our own peace and for goodwill on men. Just drop that stuff. Forget about it can't solve it, you can't figure it out, not everything's going to make sense, just drop it. Leave it be. Your job is to have goodwill. And if there's one thing we need to be hammering, and we're going to hammer it, by the way, in our Christmas Eve video. I hope to hammer this point home, hope to hammer it home on Christmas Eve night itself. 
We have got to love people no matter what. It does not matter. Just love them. That's all you need to do. You just be nice. What does it say in the Bible? God's kindness brings people to repentance. His kindness does. Your kindness is going to change the world. Your love is what's going to change the world. Remember it. Keep on. Your goodwill towards men. So in these hard days, ask yourself, am I a blessing to others? Am I helping others? Am I serving others? How's it going for me? I just read, by the way, I was reading a Christmas carol. I try to read it once a year. I don't always get to it, but I love it. It's only like 70 pages. It's not like you read a Christmas carol. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Scrooge, Three Spirits, super famous story. It's like 70 pages. You know, so it's not, it's not that difficult to get in there and knock it out. I love that story. I love that story about the challenge to be kind, the challenge to see the needs of others, the challenge to help out, and not just to live for yourself. I love it. Good will to men. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. I want you guys shining in the darkness. And I'll leave you with this thought. Now, I don't know if, if your parents still live where you grew up or not. Or if you have that feeling of deep roots somewhere. That any time you would go home, that was home. That's where you grew up. Now, when I was in college, my parents moved. They moved, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes away from where I grew up. I, never, I hardly even got back to the town where I grew up after that. So, so I lost all that sense of, of connection and where I grew up and the church where I grew up. My dad became a pastor, and so that was, that was kind of life. But my grandma, she never moved. She never moved, not my whole life. I only remember her being in that one place, and we always called it the hill. This hill was a place where when I was a little boy, I opened my Christmas gifts and played with a spinning top on the floor of her kitchen. And where I got my little battery-operated plane and put the batteries in it and played with it on Christmas morning, it was the house where I would wait for Santa to land on the roof. It was the house where I heard him sing, uh, I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus and would lay there thinking she better not. You know what I mean? Like that song really ticked me off, actually. <laughs> you know, we would, I, I would go spend two, three weeks with her every summer. Before I got married, I lived with her for four or five months. Now I moved to Ohio. Man, when I got to go back at Christmas and go to Grandma's house, that always felt like home to me. On that hill, on that place where I grew up, to be there in that same place, in that same kitchen, with the same sayings hanging on the wall that I had seen my entire life, to have grandma make me breakfast, just to get there and see it and spend time with her, to know I was accepted, to know I was loved, it was home. And it was where I belong. And I couldn't wait to go see her. I'd break away from my own family, everything going on, and just say, I'm heading to the hill. And they all knew what I was saying. And they all knew where I was going. To the hill to see grandma. For us, where is home? Spiritually speaking, it's at that manger. It's with God. That's where you belong. And I hope that Christmas time might be that time where you come home and you have that sense, I need to return to God. I need to dedicate my life to Him. I need my glory going to Him. I need to do everything I can to bring peace on earth and have goodwill to men because it may not be where you're at right now. And maybe you need to come do business and say, God, forgive me of my sins and just call on Him because He will forgive you of everything you've ever done. And you can leave this place in incredible peace today. And that's my prayer, that's my hope, that we will embrace this, that we will live this. I'm going to ask you all to stand as we close this time in prayer. Great Heavenly Father, I thank you for the good memories that I have. I thank you for the important people in my life. I thank you for all the blessings that you have rained down on us as a church and on us as people, me as an individual in this year. I, I feel super blessed in 2020. I feel like your favor has been here. I feel like I could always work on the peace part. And striving to do my best. And I'm sure that many others know exactly what I'm talking about. We're always striving, Lord, to live out Christmas on a regular basis. Praise to you. Peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Help us to live this out at all time. May this generate a love and just foster a care and a compassion inside of us, Lord, that will truly make a difference. Revive us, Lord. Change us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now,